Good morning, good evening, whatever suits your time zone. Today I'll be talking about how threat actors abuse cloud services. My name is Maciej Kotowicz, I work as a malware researcher in malwarelab.pl, uh, where I'm trying to help people with their malware problems. So if you have any, don't hesitate to reach out, maybe we can help. Um, besides working with malware, I'm doing various projects on the CTF Swiss Dragon sector. And that will be enough about me, let's uh, begin our journey. Um, so let's start with some ideas at we, where and when we can use cloud services. Um, so this is the picture most of you probably are familiar with, uh, named kill chain, infection chain, whatever you wanna, whichever name you prefer. Um, it's a basic list of steps, basically a list of steps you need to take um, you will take in order to, to, to successfully compromise the machine or whatever target is whatever is your target, uh, and we have like those um, seven simple steps, right? Name it reconnaissance, weaponization, delivery, exploitation, installation, command control, and finally doing some actions on an objective. Um, then they are pretty straightforward, right? Reconnaissance will be like gathering information about targets and um, what software they're using, what um, you know. Mm, maybe names of documents are passing in, stuff like that, so whatever gives you enough information to uh, to successfully uh, influence uh, your mm, influence your delivery method. Weaponization will be like gathering some mm, tools that will be will be needing uh, to compromise target. Delivery obviously the way how, how we wanna um, how we wanna deliver the malware tool or exploit or whatever uh, itself, mostly like will be spear phishing emails or you know watering hole attack, whatever. Um, at the some sort of exploitation will be happening, like user clicking macros or what's not what not uh, later on it would install some stuff. The, some of this stuff will call to C2 for commands or just saying okay it's there, what's what's next? And at the end the attacker will do some some uh, actions on an objective. And in case of um, the most attackers, the, the the most attackers who follow this this this, this chain, or are somehow state sponsored, or have some um, concrete objective, that will be some sort of gathering data and exfiltration. Well, at least part of those those those, those uh, actions will be exfiltration. And a few of those steps are in in few of those steps, we can actually use some cloud services to help. Um, either stay under the radar or, or speed up um, preparation for attack or stuff like that, or just um, have a, a nice storage of data that will um, be untraceable, for example. Um, so I'm thinking about, I will try to, try to show you in which uh, steps actors can use uh, cloud services and Later on, we'll try to, I'll try to show you some examples of how what actors I found and well, interesting actors I found, at least from my point of view, um, I found using and abusing um, those methods. So first, start with weaponization. Obviously, we can go, which is as I said, a way of finding, creating um, some sort of exploits or malware. And the best source of that is basically, well, it's obviously open source, if you want to stay uh, under the radar. And today it's, I guess, kind of hot debate about if uh, offensive research is good or not. So this is something I actually won't be talking about today. I just will mention it as one of the actors using it, but nothing nothing more important, nothing there. And I'll talk a little bit more about delivery itself, the delivery. Uh, as in this case, this step, um, actors can use um, cloud services, for example, for hosting uh, their, their 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 stuff, be it code, lures, whatever. Oh, but also, they can use image of um, cloud providers and abuse it, this image to, to to create some sort of uh, trust uh, relationship with a uh, user they want to attack. So it will be more inclined to click on the link, for example. Um, and C2s, obviously, uh, we can host mm, just the, the regular C2s, like you know, some crappy PHP scripts uh, on various um, 
free hostings or various BAS platform or whatever, but we can also use and something that attackers start to using is uh, creating some non-traditional situs like uh, abusing or basically using some metadata of um, cloud service or files hosted on cloud service itself uh, to hide com communication in plain sight. And at the end, as I said, the exfiltration is some sort of uh, is one of the things that has to happen. So exfiltration is another place we can actually use uh, use uh, cloud services, and one of the most like the the, the, the mm, one of the obvious obvious steps would be just to d upload data to do some uh, some 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 cloud and you know hide the the, the actual. Um, Actual C2, well, uh, exploitation of data because this will be, there will be a bane request to the uh, normal uh, normal service. <coughs> um, this concept I will try to, 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 to illustrate with a couple actors and a couple malwares and uh, one threat actor. Sorry. The first one will be um, xDrive, then we'll go with Neural, which is um, a malware, and I will try to say why it's, I believe it's mm, operated by Gaza Gang, and then we'll go with Fishing Elephant, which is very um, funny actor, I think. And I don't, I'm not sure about uh, anything being published any, about any of those besides the Fishing Elephant that I did a couple of conferences uh, in, in the last couple of months. Okay, let's go. X-Drive. Um, we'll go through whole whole infection chain mm, and I'll give you some nice uh, pointers for what, 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 what's going there. So it started as most of the attacks with uh, some sort of spear phishing and you know, ma document with macros and some sort of um, social engineering attempt to 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 to, con con to force user to click uh, and run the macros. So you have like this document with enable content to decrypt, stuff, blah blah blah. Under there, there is a very simple macro, and that will download two files from Dropbox. And Dropbox is one of the uh, services I will be talking, well mentioning actually quite a lot today. It's, it seems to be like one of the go-to um, hostings, file hosting um, providers for uh, threat actors, both crimeware and and uh, nation state APTs, what's not. But, so it will download two files, and one will be um, MSI, and which is basically installer for EXA, and the other will be uh, BAT script. So pretty uh, simple stuff. Um, so let me try to show it to you. Right, so this is this, uh, this simple script. It does basically runs the MSI. MSI will uh, unpack to file exile.exe. And we have the malware. And the malware is actually interesting plot. Um, so it's actually a very simple one. It's uh, validator slash simple slash rat download or whatever you want to name it. Um, but it's like the first stage malware that will be dropped on a, on a target in order to um, to understand what 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 happened and if we can do anything funny with this 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 uh, this, um, this compromised machine. So what will we do? It has like these four comments. Uh, it can download URL uh, download file from the URL or um, directly from bytes in the uh, in comment and write it to the file and then execute it. Take a screenshot and execute some comments. Um, the results will be uploaded to a hard-coded uh, Google Drive for attacker to to to, to write the fetch it fetch it. And the actual C2 channel is very interesting, and at least quite unusual for me. So what will happen at the and the beginning of the infection, the malware will create will fingerprint the machine get some data about you know like the username the computer name uh, some information about install viruses stuff like that and we'll create a paste in a paste bin with those informations uh, and code it I think um, so attacker can go there obviously it's using using some um, 
API key with you know some some registered account, and so the attacker knows uh, which which account to to to, to, um, to follow. So he's like you know listing the the new paste. If it cap if it happens, the, the new paste came in. He will uh, read it. If it's interesting, it will uh, execute um, issue some comments to the malware by modifying the paste. Which later will be read read by by the malware, decode it, decode, and you know the the comments will be um, will be executed. So this gives you quite a nice um, the whole infection chain looks pretty um, pretty valid if you have only network defense. So from there will be there will be no suspicious traffic at all, no no known C two connects or what's not. Uh, so that's pretty pretty nice way of bypassing the, the, the network uh, defense. I never, f I only found like two or three free cases of this malware. Um, so it's written in .NET, packed with some some uh, customized maybe or something like that version of uh, Confuser. So there is like there is nothing nothing super. Um, Super advanced, and there was no files on the drive, and the paste is already dead. But I don't know, like I never found more than than this, which is kind of upsetting because I like that, that I like it how how it creates this, this 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 attack. Well, on to the next one. Um, this one actually has some some backstory, and the backstory goes like that: At the beginning of the year, there was a research published by Talos about John rat and it was a new python rat that they found and they describe it in details it was very nice nice blog you can you should definitely read it if you didn't did not yet and but this i was working working on this case actually at the same time and they basic um as um they mentioned that the men they mentioned in the that um in their analysis, that the um, document, well, probably they, everything started with this mofa dot, dot, dot x document because it's you know something on everyone's uh, watch list, I guess, um, being uploaded to various of, of course. And you know, it's a very interesting uh, document. It has the, the analysis of this is quite well the, the malware itself is the, the, the document is quite nice that how they do infection um but it was um unique enough so i can found like finger created some, some sort of signature and search for other uh, stuff and i found those docu couple documents uh this is an excerpt from my notes back from 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 beginning of the year and the one we'll be talking about today is this one actually uh, seventeen dash twelve dot dash two thousand nineteen dot dot x, um, which is which was uh, netrat, not Python. So that's something that stood up. Um, so let's go with this story. Um, so it was this in the same same fashion. That was a file that has a remote content hosted on Google Drive. Uh, you can fetch it if you if you manage to fetch it, uh, you will get a document with a macro. Macro was pretty simple. Again, it will just call to the GitHub uh, and download executable that will be later run or decoded from base sixty four and run. And the document is the the, the the file is not there, but you have the hash, and I think it's on the virus total, so you can find it later on. Um, the malware was pretty simple. It's a first stage validator again. Uh, fingerprints machine downloads files and executes commands like every every um, every validator. But it has a little bit uh, more into it. It has a very nice C2 channel, so they create a very nice C2 channel, which is and in the way I actually didn't think about. And it's the first time I saw something like that, so let's go with about that. Sorry. <clears throat> so what they did, uh, they created a channel that was based on the files from Google Drive. Um, 
when the bot gets um, starts infection, infection, it will create the um, dr um, directory on a Google Drive um, with a bot ID. Like the, the the name of the directory was the bot ID, and under the this uh, directory there will be a bunch of there will be created a bunch of different files uh, with a diff with a specific MIME type. And it will be searching through this drive uh, for different mind times in order to understand what commands were issued to him, to the bot. Um, mind, and we have like a bunch of those those mind times uh, with and you know there's um, some synchronization going on and possibility to download tools, uh, information when the bot was last seen, everything that basically needed to, to have a functioning uh, C2 channel. But as I said, it's quite unique to use MIME types, not the files. So if you don't uh, examine the files uh, carefully, you have like just some pictures or whatever, but the whole, whole magic is, is, is in, the, uh, in the MIME types, which is quite nice. Um, and I, Query the, this, this this Google Drive, see what's happening. It's uh, still uh, available, so you can you can get uh, some files from there. Um, there were a bunch of tools. Uh, most of them were Quasar at some packed and some yeah mostly packed or obfuscated or whatnot, like typical Quasar stuff. Um, nothing fancy there. There were some C2s. And C2s at some point turns out to be related to more rats or Gaza gang or whatever you want to call them. Um, but the most important uh, at the time I was analyzing it was this file uh, Google E, uh, which turns out to be a, a, an evolution of X Gaza, which is a Kaspersky name for Spark. And the tool, this tool is, uh, is uniquely attributed to, to, to Gaza gang, so that's how I, mm, that's why I attributing this neural malware uh, to Gaza or more lots. Uh, and the name of the neural and the name of the previous one, the X drive, came from this, uh, this, 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 um, this kind of email address uh, you can see here. Uh, it's actually a login or uh, user ID of the, of the, the on the, a Google Computing Engine that's created by attackers uh, in order to use Google's API to 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 to, to uh, interact with the with the services. Uh, okay, the next one. Wow, where's my mouse? The next one will be fishing elephant, and I will go through quickly with three of those com three their campaigns and the exfiltration method. Um, more of, I'll try to be brief in, on that, more you can find on my talks about Fishing Elephant itself uh, in, on different confer conferences. All right, so the first campaign was uh, quite unique, the one actually that uh, caught my eye and make this um, kind of whole research po possible because it looks interesting. Uh, it was a spear phishing emails with a fake link to a fake Google Drive. And under this link, like this dots, docs, uh, dash, op, uh, whatever, whatever, um, they hosted a simple uh, HTML file that will be, uh, lo they look, li look, look like uh, uh, Google Drive download, um, um, site and, and and will redirect you if if the user click download that will be redirected to HTA script that will be um, responsible for getting malware and running malware on the file on the drive uh, on the hard drive of the or whatever type of drive uh, on the computer infected computer and firing up the browser that will uh, be uh, calling again to actual Google Drive in order to show the uh, the lure or the fake uh, invoice in this case. Um, 
the campaign was about sending CVs, so they had like bunch of pre prepared bunch of CVs that they hosted on Google Drive, and it will be look it looked quite vain from point of uh, from a viewpoint of being the one that's being attacked. So there was nothing suspicious, and the infection could go undetected. Mm. The payload was the link for the for the for the final payload was ho um, hinder under Bitly and sometimes others. And the host payload was hosted on cloud storage services like Dropbox, Yandex, Disk, Asus, Web Storage, and uh, and similar. And at the end, they dropped uh, RSRAT, which is a very simple uh, Python RAT that you can find find in on uh, GitHub. Um, second campaign, a little bit less um, fancy, I guess. It was just a document with maybe internal names and current events, uh, but no, not no. There was no fancy scheme like um, redirects to the Google fake Google Drive or whatnot. It was just a simple uh, document in an email uh, with DTE in order to fetch some batch script on hosted on Dropbox and execute it. Later on we'll get a uh, VBS script VB script that will get malware on our our disk and run it. So the, in the same style almost the same style as in the previous case. Uh, there was no decoys in name in, in on the on the uh, in the documents it was just a blank page so this is was this was kinda of suspicious. Uh, and they moved from PowerShell to BitsAdmin for for downloading and stayed again used Bitly for for hindering uh, uh, the final URLs and dropped RSRAT as a as a final payload. A little the last modification in the campaign number four, three, basically the same stuff as number two. Um, but there was an intermediary step added as uh, that will do some geofencing. And so, if you the request came from the country they are not interested in, they will, will be, the, the request will be redirected to the um, simple the, the script that will um, start a Windows update. If the country was of their interest, uh, they will be redirected to other scripts that will basically the same style as previously which is download a file from Dropbox uh, this time the file was actually the, the file of uh, the binary was actually encoded with base64 and uh, was mimicking uh, mimicking um, was mimicking a certificate so they can use cert util uh, to decode it and you know uh yeah so if someone doesn't uh, is, is not looking for it they, they will be missed they will miss this, the, the the moment that they actually creating the executable on the, on the, on the disk okay uh so those three campaigns they were quite successful actually i saw a lot of victims from it well a lot in terms of um target attacks which is you know in quantity of tens not not hundreds um, but I saw some victims. Um, so after after some time, the victim will if the the victim was interesting, they will get this uh, comment that will download another three files from Dropbox. And two of those files were, were totally non malicious. That will be system.exe or and tmp.exe with the real names erclone.exe and seven uh, z non seven z dot exe. The first one is a, is, a, is a compiled binary of AirClone, and the second one is 7-zip, obviously. And, and the AirClone is actually a tool used for managing uh, cloud um, disks, so like st like different storages. One of those would be Google Drive. So after this, this this script on the top, the victim will get the second script. And the script will basically iterate over interesting files, uh, pack them, and upload it to Google Drive using this this uh, AirClone utility. 
The nice thing about this utility is it's written in uh, in Rust. Oh no, it's in, in Go. So the Go lang. So it's uh, it's com it's statically compiled, so it can run on any decent decently new uh, system, Windows system, obviously. So they can just drop the binary and be done with the all the um, all the exfiltration process. Pretty nice. They are still operating, and but I cannot find any more evidence of their infection, like the the, the first stages of infection. I don't know. Um, well, you see, so see some examples how to use ser cloud services. Mm, let's talk a little bit about pros and cons about the, this approach. And it will be from the attacker viewpoint, because it's kind of easy to think in that way. So the big plus is obviously that most of them are free or almost free, quite easy to set up, and you need just a couple clicks to to, to be. Uh, to have a working hosting or disk storage or whatever you need mm, they are most of the time easy scriptable uh, easily scriptable because that's how they are designed and so you have either quite easy it's, it's quite easy to create automated way to analyze your assets or you know have uh, keep tabs on your assets in this case would be for for example bots new bots um from outsider, its point of view, it's kind of hard to figure it out uh, if the link belongs to an attacker or not. So if it's a, it's a good link or not. Uh, for example, like you see the links from Dropbox, there is no way of knowing who the owner is, what the file is, uh, unless and until you access it. Uh, in case of Google Drive, you get the same, more or less similar file structure, but you get can get some metadata, which I'll be talking about later on, uh, in a few minutes. And you know, if you use open source malware, you can kiss code attribution goodbye, obviously. And it's actually hard to get the provider to take down an account or files that they're hosting. Uh, with actually notable exception of Heroku, which I worked pretty uh, closely with, uh, they get concerned about phishing elephant using the infrastructure, so they managed to. Uh, create some scripts and some signatures to to find out their activities and later on keep them out from 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 the infrastructure, which was which was a nice surprise. And obviously, if there are pluses, there are minuses. And the minuses for the attacker is if the researcher know where to look, most of those services uh, leaves a lot of metadata, quite a lot of metadata. Uh, for example, Google Drive will give you a, um, email addresses. With the, the, the IDs of the account that create the files, but also um, timestamps of cre of creation and modification, so that gives you some ideas of time frame of an attack. And but the bigger biggest problem is that API some sort of API keys are, or encryption keys or whatever some sort of keys are needed for accessing those resources. And if you don't know how to properly secure them or or configure them, you'll give <coughs> sorry. Uh, you'll give a lot of access to researchers uh, to the data that they should not see. For example, you can see all, all of C2 or take down or remove all the C2 if you didn't secure, give proper access rights to the, the, the API keys you're embedding in them into malware. And as I said, the cloud provide operators have a little bit, uh, have a little bit different visibility than your typical hosters. So if you buy a dedicated software, uh, you're basically done with it, right? What, what, anything that, all, all, all of the things that can be done by the hoster is basically remove your account, clean your machine. But, you know, the cloud providers can, like if they, they host, they're doing some SaaS or PaaS uh, services, they can uh, monitor what you're doing or other things that they have uh, insight into, but so the, the, the insight is, is quite uh, quite unique. And that can be used for good in terms of, you know, finding the bad guys. Um, hey, that's all from me. Thank you very much. Hope you guys enjoyed at least a little bit. If you have any questions, I'm here to answer them. If not, if you don't want to do it publicly, send me an email, uh, uh, contact me on Twitter, wherever you want. Thank you very much and goodbye.